You're listening to the Black Eagles podcast with Sinan Schwarting and Khan Bayazit. Welcome back, everybody. Episode 68 of Besiktas International's The Black Eagles Podcast. I am your host, Sinan Schwording, live from New York City. And we're coming at you guys on a big day as uh, Besiktas is fresh off of a match with Ankara Guju. And I have two special guest co-hosts with, with me here. One of them coming in from somewhere near the border of Canada and the United States. Evran Akman and the other one, everyone's favorite co-host and mine, Khan Bayazu. How are you guys doing? Right in buzz. Uh, we'll start Take. with the senior most favorite, the, the the leader of this whole operation, Khan. How you doing? T- yeah, take that, everyone. I'm the favorite, man. <laughs> <laughs> this is take three. So we're really, take three. We're working take on three. it. Um, <laughs> How are you doing, Evran? You know, I'm, I'm doing all right. You know, just happy to have another Bishash game to talk about. Yeah, and no spoilers. Yeah, what, no spoilers. How do, you, how, you, how do you think he's doing? He just got ter- told that he's like the third favorite person on this podcast. <laughs> Whatever. He's he's like seven years old. He's got many years to to, to like seven. endear himself with the, uh, the fan base. I'm kidding. Um, I'm happy he's not. He could literally be my son if he was. <laughs> well, you, you already have one, Khan. You might as well. Yeah. On this sad case. Uh, I'm a little older than the seven. <laughs> for the record, yeah, of note. For any single ladies out there who want to know, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, he is. He is available. He's a, for he's sure. a bachelor no, as well. No, no, no. Don't worry man. about that. Don't worry about he's that. He's good looking too. He's skinny. I don't he's think so. He's uh, well. So. He's focused on his career Shadow. at the moment. Though. He's working towards professional football. Coming back from a big injury. Uh, yeah, good luck to you on that, by the way. How, how are you doing, everyone? How's your How's your leg? Uh, it's, it's, it's getting there. We're halfway through the recovery, so. Nice. The ACL. Yeah, you, know, you know what we could do? We could just do, like, a uh, interview with Atiba Hutchinson and then just pass everyone off as Atiba. I swear to God, he sounds <laughs> exactly the same as Atiba. It's that Canadian it It's the in- influence. I'm so <laughs> close to Canada up there. That's what's going on. <laughs> hey, you Canadian, eh? Yeah, hey, how you doing, eh? Uh, um, oh, my God. But so, yeah, uh, big day. Speaking of Tim Hutchinson, he played. Uh, yeah, let's get into it. Let me talk about our lineup. So, Loris Karius started in the goal. On the back line, we saw Doma Gosvida and Isi Mirin. Uh, on, the, on the flanks, Gokan Gunul was on the right side, and Jana Erkin was reinserted onto the left side. Dorokan Tokuz and Atiba Hutchinson were on the back of the midfield with Adem Liayet in the number 10 role. German Lance was on the right side of the midfield, and Guven Yalchin was on the left side. One little change up. Of course, Barak Yilmaz was up front. He had a situation where he needed one yellow card and he would be suspended against Galatis today. That was hovering over him coming into the match and throughout. Uh, fellas, any comments on the lineup? The, the obvious thing to note is that Chanel Ganesh did not go with Shinji Kagawa up front, taking him out. Sliding Adam Ljajic into the 10 roll and putting in Guven Yelchin on the wing. Uh, anything else that I'm not mentioning there? Do uh, you guys have any comments about that little doozy of a note? I mean, not really. I think it was like the logical lineup. Maybe the John Air for Medell switch. Obviously, Medell was injured. But um, maybe Guven for Kagawa was questionable. But it didn't exactly work last game. So I can't say it was a bizarre decision. Uh-huh. Yeah, plus with Kagawa on the bench, you have something a spark. at hand, you know, like you have a, a weapon to throw in in the second half, should it be needed. You have a spark of joy. I don't know if you get that right. Yeah, but I mean, for me, Guven on the wing, it just doesn't really work. But, you know, with Quaresma, Adriana both coming back from injuries, but it's, 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 it would have been a very risky thing to put them into the lineup straight away. 
Uh, so I think it's a logical lineup, uh, but doesn't mean it's 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 optimal. But it's what he had at his disposal, and arguably, uh, yeah, like we said, the logical choice. Anything for you to say, Evron, as far as just getting this out of your system? Uh, Quaresma was not picked as a starter today. Condolences. Yeah, I was just happy he was back from injury. <laughs> um, so all right, all right. I can't complain. There you go. As soon as he saw that that lineup and the bench, he I bet he teared up. <laughs> <laughs> I think, I'm thinking of the the, the gif with the kid with the tear that the one tear that rolls down. Um, all right, uh, moving on then. Uh, so yeah, the match got underway. I won't spoil anything. We're going to talk about the standings and the table and how, how everything aligned coming into the match after we talk about the match itself. But I will say that, of course, this was a big match going into it. Besiktas was back in contention, and results this weekend have fared well for the club. So there was a lot riding on this match, and, of course, that meant a lot of tension, all the, the heart attacks that that induces, typically, for those of us who are a little older and frailer of heart and mind. Um, but yeah, anyway, with all of that said, Besiktas settled things down, settled accounts rather quickly. In the eighth minute, Burak Yilmaz struck uh, a nice little pass from Guven Yalchin. <laughs> Hand it over to you, Evron, Mr. Akman, uh, for color commentary. So, uh, Guven picked up the ball in the center circle. He, uh, you know, hit a hard pass out wide, kind of like threw down the line to Burak. He was one on one with the defender. He cut it in and quickly took a shot right after, you know, right after he got the half yard of space back across to the wards, the near post, put a lot of power on it. Wasn't, wasn't the most, uh, you know, wasn't upper 90 or bottom corner, but it was just. It was so hard the goalie got nowhere near it. So that was 1 0. Bam. And so, yeah, right away, uh, some good news to work off of for a surprise, for a change. Uh, but yeah, that said, things got cagey right after there. And I think most would agree that Ankur Guju pretty much played the better football for the rest of the first half. Uh, going into halftime, the score remained 1 to 0 in Bechtaja's favor. But. I think Ankur Guja had like 59% possession. And although we've said many times here on the podcast that Besiktas plays well on the counter you know, without the ball, today was probably an example of that not being the case, especially in that first half. Uh, would you guys agree? And did I forget any sort of momentous occasions besides the goal there in that first half? I can't really think of a good opportunity for us, but I mean, given the the, the final score, I think that uh, it, it maybe it did work. Um, I think our second goal was on a counter. We haven't uh, gotten to the second half yet, Khan, but I just mean in that first half, yeah. right? It was a pretty <laughs> poor half. Right? Yeah, yeah. Second, first half, very poor. Yeah, probably the worst we've played all season at, at Vodafone, and that includes the one against Antalya Sport, I'd say, where we were abysmal too. Uh, but uh, we were blown away in the first half by Ankara Gaju. It was a wonder that we were in front at halftime. And I think if, if any team was ever deserving of being in the lead at halftime at Vodafone, it was Ankara yeah, Gaju today. Yeah. I, I would have to agree. And, and Carriers came up with a few saves. Um, better, I think bigger ones later in the, in the game, actually. But we'll talk about that. Uh, yeah, everyone, any, any comments from you? Are you the first half? Um, 
I feel like uh, the two wingers for Ankara Guja were causing a lot of problems, especially in the first half. You want to give them a name? We, it, 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 put a name on them. Yeah, Hadi Sako on the left and uh, Tyler Boyd on the Let's right. Respect on their names. So, um, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> Boyd especially was, was, was great again, and he's yeah. been great ever since joining uh, them at, 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 uh, in the winter. Him and Orgil have had a really good impact on, on, on Ankara Guja's performances. Orgil is kind of faded away a little bit in recent weeks with Boris has just been kept has kept on going uh he scored the winner against Fenerbahce as well I think two weeks ago he's got a equalized. bunch of goals and assists already I think he's got oh equalizer I think oh, he's no, got like he three the first goal and then Fener equalized my bad I think he's got three goals and eight assists or something this season already and yeah it, it should be noted that Ankur Guju was coming into this match on pretty good form mm -hmm. you know they've also had a pretty good second half of the season we slagged them off quite a bit going into the break because it seemed like they were yeah. on the verge of collapse, but yeah. they've really uh, kind of pulled it together. So they, they, this was going to be a big match. They put together almost an entire new team. Yeah, and it's they had worked. like a record <laughs> amount of in in and out, you know, transfer activity. I think so it was pretty weird. Yeah, they were window. really good early on in the season, and then they had massive payment issues where most of the players didn't get their wages, and a bunch of them left mm -hmm. during the summer, uh, during the winter, and like after their opening period in the season where they were really good, uh, they they lots of players, you know, stopped refusing to pay or whatever, and the morale went down. Their form dipped significantly, and they looked dead in the water, but they somehow managed to turn things around. Uh, and, and, and they got some really quality players as well. But I already thought at the beginning of the season they had a decent side on paper, you know, with Al-Kabir. And uh, if you remember, we beat them away as well, but we they gave us plenty of trouble there too, if I'm not mistaken. Um, we just were very efficient yeah. there. And it's one today. of those games. But, but anyway, um, excuse me. <laughs> but anyway, back to the match at hand. Uh, going into the second half, Besiktas, you, you, you wanted to see them come out with a different kind of energy, a different kind of uh, soulfulness to their play. And sure enough, you know, the game still didn't necessarily break Besiktas' way decisively, but things looked better. I remember commenting immediately that it looked like uh, Atiba Hutchinson had woken up because he had a pretty poor first half. Uh, and, you know, Atiba's kind of like one of those guys at the heart of the team where he's he might be a kind of indicator uh, and sure enough, uh, in the 52nd minute, E.C. Miran got himself a, a silly yellow card pulling on a guy's shorts. Uh, but only two minutes later, Besiktas would strike again. This time, in the it was a clumsy goal, but hey, we needed it. Uh, Domagos Vida scored. Oh! Senor Akman. <laughs> so uh, Vita decided to uh, step out from the back line to pressure the ball in the center circle. He wins it, plays it out wide, and instead of turning around, he, he just makes a bolting run towards the box. The ball goes to Burak on the wing. He crosses it, and uh, somehow the, the goalie punches it into his own teammate, rebounds to Vita, and he just has a simple tap in, and that's 2-0. Um, so yes, there it was. Besiktas had a two-goal lead suddenly, and what an important uh, two-goal lead that would be. Uh, you know, I, I think that was a moment where the game could have turned either way, probably, and luckily it turned in Besiktas' favor. In the 62nd minute, Sadat Akchai uh, was taken out of the match for Moulin, uh, who came in, and one minute later, and so perhaps this was sort of in the, in the build-up to it, uh, a penalty had been awarded. Burak Yilmaz stepped up to take it and slided it home, giving Besiktas a 3-0 lead.
Uh, Akman Bey, what do you have to say about that goal? Uh, In fact, why don't you describe, describe how the penalty had been created? So Atiba kind of like rushed into the box, and as he was receiving, he went to, you know, turn back, and uh, the defender went to win the ball, missed the ball, and just swept both his legs from under him. And the referee had no doubt about it and pointed right to the spot. And then on the penalty, Burak went right, the goalie went to his left, you know, same direction, but... It was too well placed for him to get. Indeed, yeah, he actually went the right way. Uh, he, he, the keeper was sort of sneaky, moving back and forth. I actually thought he might be going the wrong way at first. Yeah. Uh, and the 64th minute, right We shouldn't right forget after, though. Right before that, what happened right before that, or are we gonna mention it after? What happened right before that? The red card. <laughs> Where where the keeper just takes out lens outside oh, of the box. Yeah. Oh, there should have been red card. Quote unquote offside, but very clearly not. Yeah, that was terrible. Very was clearly terrible. onside. Even even yeah. the, the line that they showed. So I wonder what those guys in the VAR bus are doing because that was clearly one hundred percent onside. I think Burak was, wasn't it Chune Chuck here in the VAR. Bus? Yeah, I think Burak was off, no was, was in an offside position, but the ball wasn't played towards him. Uh, it was clearly played towards lens. That was not offside. Should have been a red card for Altai. That's like one or two minutes before the penalty. It should have been a rip. Yeah, I do remember that. Straight. Uh, but then, yeah, like, uh, the, the football gods smiled down on us after that. I think they gave us, we got the penalty right after. It was like, come on, you can't, can't do that. That was too blatant. Uh, but anyway, right after that goal, Shinji Kagawa came into the match for Guven Yalchin. So, uh, the Japanese attacking midfielder entered the match uh, putting sort of disarray to the whole tactic. I, I did did Adem Liyat slide out to the left side at that point? Yep. Yeah, right. Because there would be more action uh, after that anyway. But yeah, in the 65th minute, Alihan Kubalas came into the match for Kulusic, uh, and in the 66th minute, Kitsu got himself a yellow card for them. In the 68th minute, Sako. In the 70th minute, Janer Kin got himself yeah, got himself a yellow card. So things were getting a little intense at that point. Yeah. And the, the Kitsio, the Kitsio yellow should have been a red too, by the way. That was that assault. That's right. That was the yeah. nasty the two-footed, yeah. uh, two-footed stomp almost. Yeah. And, on, a, uh, and again, no VAR interjection. On Barack, right? And it pisses me off immensely because of what would happen a little bit later. I mean, if you can interject twice on, on what comes later, then how are those two things allowed to slide? It's, it's beyond me. Um, so in the 76th minute, Ricardo Quaresma would come into the match for Jeremy <laughs> Lenz. Evron, yeah, your man's finally playing a match while you're in the podcast. That's going to be great for everyone. Um, in the 79th minute, then, a penalty would be awarded to Ankara Guju and Sako would, well, initially it would be defended, very well saved by Karius. <laughs> taking penalty if we're going to be honest but he saved it it would be called back because Domingos Vida stepped over the line supposedly and then on the second go around Sako would or actually the first time it wasn't Sako who it was Tyler who Boyd who took the first one yeah it was Boyd who had been saved and then Sako put the second one away making the score three to one Ankur Guju getting on the board give us the color commentary uh Akman san <laughs> on the whole uh, situation. Yeah, the, uh, how the penalty was created, <laughs> dubiously. And so then, the, of course, uh, yeah, the whole damn thing. <laughs> yeah, the penalty was just, um, I don't really think anyone knew what was going on. Maybe I just lost concentration, but all of a sudden I saw VAR review and uh, how the Lumos Miller was sprinting to the sideline. I was like, what the hell happened? And then uh, as the ball was bouncing or going over uh, Pajdan's head, it just about flicked off Atiba's head, elbow. Just Did about. It? Did it? it? Based on the slow motion review, you could see a slight touch, 
but in yeah. lifetime, See, the, the it, thing it, that, it the, didn't the look problem like the problem I have with it is that the ball didn't like the rotation wasn't impacted. It it, it did tweak a little bit. I I mean it I saw it. Maybe I missed saw it, but clearly if. Me and the referee, I guess, saw yeah, the same. Very, very, spin. very, very slightly. It's yeah. grazed, it grazed him. It must have touched the fabric on the... <laughs> on his, on it. No, seriously. The fabric on his yeah. sleeve. And in the replay, it almost kind of looks like he does it on purpose. But it's sl super slow motion. Yeah. You, cannot, you cannot go off on that. That is not... For me, that's not a penalty. Sorry. That is unintentional handball. That, that's, but, just um, a T, that's just a Tiba running. And what, what what do you I mean? How do you guys run? Do you run with your hands uh, straight next to your body on your side, or do you? Well, especially because if there was any intention, I think it was that he anticipated making contact with the player, and so he kind of extends himself to kind of yeah. brace himself. I mean, obviously, and instead he was the player to... steps forward, he misses contact with the player, and mm. maybe touches the ball. See, I, you know, I don't know. <laughs> he touched it, but it was a super soft penalty, especially given. I mean. Uh, you can't say okay, this call is wrong, so that one has, so he has to compensate there. So I'm not, a, I'm not a, I, I'm not pro compensation, but you, you can't be giving a super, super, super soft penalty like this when you just let two clear red cards slide. And the first one, okay, that might be a little harsh uh, on on the goalkeeper because it's not like a dangerous fall or anything, and you know all that. So I get that as a referee, you kind of have a little bit. Ah, oh, you know, I don't really want to send this kid off, twenty year old, twenty one year old, whatever. But that second tackle could have been an injury for Buraki. Could have been out for the rest of the season, whatever. That's a red effing card, man. There's no excuse for for not giving red cards for stuff like that. It pisses me off. Yeah. Anyway. I mean, <laughs> continuing on on the situation. So after the VAR review, oh, yeah, right. they they gave the penalty. Um, Tyler Boyd took it. Carrier saves it, and then um, it's kind of like a scruffle for the rebound. Somehow they miss again. VAR has called it again to say that uh, I believe it was Vita entered the box. Well, like six people entered the box too early, but Vita actually made an interception on the rebound. So I'm guessing that's why they actually brought it back. And then um, okay. Sako took it again, and this time he, he scored. So that was 3-1 uh, now in the 79th minute. Um, Atiba Hutchinson was sort of uh, resolute in arguing with the ref about something in either the initial call, probably the initial call now that we're talking about it, but maybe even in the, in the, in the decision to replay it because he seemed upset about that too. Uh, but anyway, yeah, that would be it. Uh, of course he's upset. I mean, Karius is playing a great match. He makes a brilliant exactly. save, and then and I mean it's unfair to Karius, but apparently I, I didn't I, I didn't go back and see it, but apparently Vita was in the box too early, and then he made the block on the rebound on the penalty. Yeah, that's what everyone so was saying. Yeah. If that's the case, then I it's a correct decision. You can't really argue yeah, no, it. Yeah, no, it's but it's fair, it's it just fair, it, but it feels very un unfair and yeah. unjust for Karius who deserved really, the clean sheets. Yeah, and it capped what what was a fan. Fantastic performance by Karius all match. Uh, and it was mm -hmm. just like, oh my God. And he even maintains the clean sheet here. Like it was it was a moment where for the whole stadium and a kind of redemptive moment, even because he's, you know, been at odds with the fan base and the fan base was reacting positively. I mean, it was it was a great moment for a moment, for just a moment. But uh, anyway, in the 79th minute, I guess right after the goal, I didn't see this. Tiago Pinto got himself a yellow card. For a foul on Quaresma. I remember that. Oh, well, of course you would. Of course you do. Uh, in the 81st minute, then, on a lovely little assist from who but Shinji Kagawa, Adem Lijic. And it felt like Besiktas was, they felt so aggrieved by having given up that goal that they really wanted to make it up in the goal differential ta ta uh, the table. Tally. Uh, tally, yeah. But so, uh, boom, like right, right away they respond, Adem Lijic. Who else, right? Like, this guy's been so mm -hmm. hot all, you know, spring slash the end of winter. Uh... <laughs> Ne istiyorsunuz bu konuda? 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 Ne istiyorsunuz bu konu
Give us the color commentary, uh, Signore Akman. <laughs> so it was a long throw by John Nair into uh, Raich's feet, right at the left side of the box kind of thing. Cuts in, gives it to Kagawa inside. Kagawa first time, one, two, pass back into the box. Goalkeeper's coming out. You know, maybe he could try to just shoot it hard, but he just delicately lifts it over the keeper little chip. right into the top, actually the top corner. But, cheeky um, little chip. <laughs> cheeky yeah, little br chip. Brilliant, was, brilliant uh, finish. Lovely. And a brilliant cap on the game. Really sweet. Stuff. And it just goes to show you once again, good players will find each other on the pitch, but you just need to give them some time, man. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. This, this is stuff that can happen more. Obviously, it's a different. The, the game is broken open at this point and all that stuff, but you know that there's something there. Yeah. But you need to have some patience and, and you, you need to train on it and all that. And Khan, I, I'm going to hold you up because today I really want to do a hashtag Shinji Watch segment because uh, i think we, we've we've not done a we've it's been a disservice to our our new japanese fan base we have we should talk a little bit about his impact not just today but lately uh, i think there wasn't much to talk about the uh, last couple of weeks with him it's unfortunately true. very true. very pale performance last week starting and then the week before he had a i think he came on as a sub but didn't really do anything yeah. but today he, he, he got an assist and he was uh, involved yeah. And uh, what could be, what could turn out to be a very important goal because now we're level on goal differential with Bashakshir. Yeah, and he had a, but, a uh, nice uh, long ball uh, up to, that found Barak Yilmaz. Barak Yilmaz brought it down and then kind of lost it. Uh, and he had a few nice little touches actually that towards the end of the match today. So it seems like he's maybe responding to Chanel Ganesh's, uh, you know, typical indecisiveness Critique. and yeah exactly yeah. but maybe maybe carries this too i mean a couple yeah. of weeks ago uh yeah he was scolded Shinobu publicly Nish was basically roasting him publicly and and look at the performances carries has put in since yeah well all right uh, Khan, hold I, on let me, let me let me yeah. take us out of this match so in the 82nd minute ilhan parlak came into the match sako came out in the 88th minute adriano came into the match for burak yomaz and then the, the the tactic the formation is is all kinds of crazy at that point but so yeah that's how the Kagawa, match would end yeah. seven <laughs> minutes of extra time uh but yeah six no they added there i guess they added another one because of uh you know disputes during the during the, the extra time or whatever it was so it ended up being seven minutes but there it was Besitash ended the match victorious four to one a big win for Besitash in the end and so now we have to sort of segment this. We put out a tweet earlier asking for questions from our fan base. We've gotten three questions uh, while we've been chatting it up here. Uh, so we'll talk about that after we do our. We'll do a try to. We'll try to do a light analysis here. First, however, um, Khan, can you talk about the table? Because I feel like that's going to weigh on everything we've got to say about today. Uh, tell us, and again, I'll I'll do the the shout out for you. Khan heads a, a brilliant podcast with with a few other fans from the, of the Turkish Super League, uh, Fenerbahce fan, Galatasaray fan, uh, an, an assorted array of guys over there. Uh, they talk about the Super League every week. Khan, uh, tell us a little bit about your expert analysis for what's going on in the league. Oh uh, yeah, check out Football Ala Turca or uh, at Futi Ala Turca on Twitter. You can find us on iTunes. You can find us on Google Play. Uh, I think you can basically find us everywhere. So Football Ala Turca, it's a, a weekly program that features uh, the entire Turkish Super League. We focus on the entire Turkish Super League. Uh, also, if, if Turkish clubs are active in Europe, we'll focus on that. And of course, Turkish Cup, we'll, we'll talk about that as well. And the incoming been... transfer season, which is going to be... And of course, the incoming transfer season, and we'll we'll do specials and stuff. You know, kind of like what you're used to at the Black Eagles podcast, where we'll do specials, interview people uh, during the off season and stuff like that. We'll we'll have some special stuff out for you, but definitely check that out. Um, but let's get to the table here, and the reason Sinan has been saying, and, and the reason as well why why we've kind of been jubilant throughout this episode so far, uh, and the reason why Sinan said that this was such a big match for us is because the unthinkable happens. On Friday, Medipol Bashakshi here, the proud league leaders that have been at top of the table and, and, and seemingly unbeatable for months, 
lost away to Gustepe, and I ding, shot ding. it down last week. I completely shot it down. I didn't think I Gustepe see? was going to be I able. was the one who was pressing You were the one. <laughs> I did not believe Gustepe were going to be able to pull it off because I've obviously I'm paying attention closely to all teams in the league for, for you know for other uh, for the podcast and stuff for football at Turka. So I'm, I'm watching these teams closely. I've been watching Gustepe fail time and time and time again uh, and, and coming up short, especially in attack. But on Friday, somehow they managed to pull it off. They went ahead in the first half through Cameron Jerome. Uh, Bashakshir had two goals disallowed, both were offside in the first half. So twice they were denied uh, an equalizer. And then in the second half, on the break, um, winning the ball around the mid circle. I don't remember exactly the minute. I think it was like 65 or 70 or something. Uh, and it was, um, what's his name again? Uh, Denis Kada. Denis Kada wins the ball, goes one on one the goalkeeper, makes it 2 0. Bashakshir do not can't re- reply 2 0 full time, which is good for us Ooh. because if we if we end on 11 points at the end of the season with Bashakshir here, goal differential would, will determine who ends above who because in head to head. Uh, we're both on. We're on two-two, and away goals. Apparently, according to our uh, resident uh, researcher guy. Yusuf, Yusuf uh, Paklaj, uh, away goals don't count anymore. So it's head-to-head is equal. So it's gonna come down to goal differential. If goal differential is the same, then it's gonna come down to matches one. Um, let's take a quick look at matches one. Uh, obviously, with that win. Uh, with that loss, they didn't get any points this week, and they were six points in front of us. With our win, we are now we've closed the gap to three points. They now have 18 wins. We have 17 wins. So obviously, we need them to drop three more points, uh, so we can catch up on them in wins. They're gonna play Galatasaray still, uh, but let's take a quick look at the table. Galatasaray is yet to play. They play on Monday. They play away at Atikar Konya so they're still on 59 points, same as us. They're on 33 goals plus. We're on 27 goals plus. Then leading the table is Bashakshir with 62 points. They are also on 27 goals plus. So we are on the exact same goal differential with Bashakshir right now. It doesn't really matter what the goal differential with Galatasaray is unless we lose. But if we lose next week to Galatasaray, then, then you know, it's over anyway. Yeah, uh, so yeah. as long as we do not lose, Next week to Galtsrai, obviously we want to win, and, and if we want to be champions, we kind of have to win. But if we don't lose, um, then if we end on level points with Galtsrai, we'll have the head-to-head with them, so we'll end above them anyway. If all three end on at level points and we don't lose against Galtsrai, then uh, we should be champions, I think, uh, because we have a three-way head-to-head. We have seven points. Uh, obviously, if Bashakshi here would beat. Um, if Bashakshir would beat them, it uh, would beat Galtsrai. Then, if Galtz, if, if Bashakshir would beat Galtsrai, then uh, they would have also seven points, uh, three way head to head. But obviously, if, if they beat Galtsrai, it's very unlikely that we all end on level points. So, ending on level points is only really possible, I think, if we don't lose against Galtsrai and if Galtsrai beat Bashakshir. But we'll have to wait and see. There's still four matches to go. Um, and then there's one more thing that might be worthy of note. Trabs on Spore, who've been breeding down our necks for months now, have been on a good run as well. Slipped up. They drew against... They drew against Fenerbahce. They conceded a last-minute equalizer in Kadiköy, and they uh, were held to a one-one draw, draw. So they're now on fifty-three points, six points behind us. Was it Elmas again who scored? It was Elif Elmas. Yes. Two weeks in a row, this little guy. Well, no, two home games in a row, oh, okay, but he didn't yeah. score last week. <laughs> uh, but he scored against Galatasaray too, <laughs> like of course. Was... Um, but yeah, no, uh, the, the table is extremely interesting. I don't think that anyone, any Besiktas fan, no matter how positive if you would have <laughs> said, even even match day 23 we drew 3-3 against Fenerbahce and we were 13 points behind fast forward six games the gap's only three points imagine we've we won that 10, match Khan. we be ahead of we've right made now. up 10 points yeah but we've made up 10 points in six yeah, games no, so who's to say that we can't make up three points in four obviously we have an extremely tough schedule still we travel away to galtry next week that's going to be the cracker that's going to be the deciding that's going to be our match of the season no question about it and then two weeks after that we travel away to trabzon 
so we still have two really difficult away games. Um, but in terms of home games, we don't have super easy matches, but I mean, if you want to be champion, if you want to end in the top two, you have to win those. So next week, we play Galtzrai in Galtzrai, then we play at home against Alanya Spore, then we play away against Trabzonspor, and then on the final match day, we play at home against Kasim Pasha. On, now, guys. obviously, four games, still a lot to have to happen, five games still for Galtzrai, but um, yeah, no, it's, it's super exciting at the, at the top of the table right now and and so, uh, so it, it is at, at the bottom yeah. of the table because yeah uh gustepe with that win now 30 points bursa got a draw today uh at uh nil nil at home against akisar who are dead bottom uh, so bursa move up to 30 points as well if i'm not mistaken so both gustepe and bursa are on 30 points at the moment then we have erzurum who are on uh, 29 uh, they have 29 points and then there's akisar who's on 25 so Erzurum, uh, Bursa, and, and Gustepe, super dogfight. Two of those are gonna go down. Um, Bursa still play Gustepe. Uh, Bursa still play. Uh, yeah, I think this. Yeah, they mainly just play. Still play Gustepe. So it's it's, it's extremely um, interesting there. But and Khan, if I might ask, uh, right above that little dogfight there. So those guys are stuck on thirty. Who, by chance? Just by chance, who would be the next team to potentially fall into that scrum at the bottom? Just out of curiosity. Just don't curiosity. try for the football gods, you know. <laughs> don't be too gleeful. Uh, well, yeah, of course, Fenerbahce have are, are on 34 points, so they're four yeah. points above the relegation yeah, bar right stuff. now. So they could still go down. It's there. It's still possible. Yeah. Uh, and and of note, yeah, Andre Goju is uh, only. Two points above them they're, they're at six points above the scrum so if yeah. they really if but, things but collapsed think... after today it could but i, I they you we've said this they're, they're they've looked better of late they yeah. should probably get it back together um okay so let me quickly talk about today's stats before we dive back into this match and we'll kind of do a quick analysis before we get into listener questions we have quite a few some fun ones um so statistically here Besiktas was not dominated, but they were on the sort of losing end of a lot of the major stats. Ankur Guju had 15 shots, the best touches 10, though only eight on target, the best touches five. Possession went towards Ankur Guju at 55%, 45% for Besiktas. That actually was better, so that there was an improvement in the second half, because in the first half it was even more lopsided. Uh, passes completed 400 by Ankur Guju to only 342 by Besiktas. Passing accuracy 77% by Ankur Guju to only 70% by Besiktas. Perhaps an issue. Uh, I'll mention that there was one of the questions posed by our, one of our followers actually pertains to that. And so that's, you know, pay, make a mental note of those stats. Fouls committed 18 by Ankur Guju to 15 by Besiktas. The three yellow cards for Ankur Guju, two for Besiktas. Three offsides to one. Uh, Ankur Guju was offsides more. And nine corners for Ankur versus two to Besiktas. So, again, the stats would suggest that Ankur Guju largely controlled this match. Now, Evron, I hand the mic to you. What do you think? What do you think <laughs> um... those stats say? I think it was uh, um, a lot of those stats. It's like when you're chasing that that first goal, that's where Ankara really generated most of their their shots and their chances and their possession was from the kickoff up until I'd say the uh, the second Bishkash goal. Yeah, it was. I mean, they were still pushing after that, but they weren't as necessarily in control as they were before. Yeah, they were just so like they kept pushing, kept pushing, kept pushing, kept pushing, but they couldn't really they couldn't get that first goal. They had a couple decent to good chances nothing like you know you have to score that but they had shots from distance they had you know headers from the top of the box things like that and Karius was on top of all of them yeah and so Karius overall, did have for, no, maybe four really good saves today yeah he had several good saves but um for like an away team in Vodafone they play you know better than you would expect just overall in general because even when we used to back in the day when we played in Europe not too many teams would come to Vodafone and possess obviously we're not as good as we used to be but you know for a small team or smaller team they did very well but um i think is if they scored that one goal let's say to make it one one 
you might not have seen that sort of uh, the statistical discrepancy. It might have been more even. Yeah. I think. Yeah. As they continued to push and not score, they you know they kept racking up shots. Sure. Yeah, and a big credit to that that Domingos Vida goal really did turn the the game in our favor. I think that was a sort of decisive yeah. moment, maybe. Khan, do you have so any you notes about also... the stats? Yeah, I think you should also mention, though, I mean, even before we scored, they were already putting us under a tremendous pressure. So yeah. I don't know yeah. if I don't know if an equalizer would have changed that much. I think they had a game plan and a game plan re- revolved mainly around attacking. Um, they were playing very positive football. They came to play. And uh, I, I don't necessarily think that it would have changed had they gotten that equalizer. Um, but uh yeah, we we once again proved to be very efficient. I mean, it, it it's kind of rem, kind of reminds me of of that 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 Riza match where I definitely don't think we were the better team, but we we got we were really efficient. Got on the score sheet seven times there, and it's happened a couple times this season already where we really weren't a better team, but we were so much more efficient, and uh, that, that happened here too. I think uh, the, the opposites can be said about, for example, that Antalya match. That we lost at, at Vodafone, our first ever defeat at Vodafone in the league, two to three earlier in the season. I think that was the opposite of this. That was Antalya being extremely efficient, having like one half chance and scoring three goals. Um, but this this was a uh, not not an encouraging like like everyone said they didn't have like a plethora of great scoring opportunities. But Carius definitely had to make some very key saves at nil nil and at one nil. Uh, so he was very important and. Uh, yeah, uh, I think the, the the stats reflect the match properly. I think Ankurgiju were deserved more, and even Karius said in his post match interview uh, that Ankurgiju deserved didn't deserve to lose four to one. And obviously Ankurgiju, uh, their their coach and players said the same thing, but obviously they're gonna say yeah. that. But they're right; they didn't deserve to lose four one. Yeah. I, I, it's hard to argue that point. I mean, all right, so let's just cut right into this now. As far as analysis goes, I think. One question in particular from from the listener is going to steer us a little bit. First, let me quickly, just to move things along, let's just go over quickly who our highlights and lowlights would be today and see where that takes our sort of overall analysis. And so, Khan, because I I was giving the mic to Evron a lot last week and letting him go first, I'm going to let you go first. Uh, For you, Khan, who was your man of the match? Karius. Yeah, I was hoping you'd say that. Nice. Any comments Definitely. to come with that? No comments. He kept us in the match. He, when when we were struggling, he's m- one of the main reasons that we got po- we got the three points today. It's uh, he had a fantastic game, and he made the saves when he had to at crucial moments. And uh, yeah, he's the reason that we won four to one today. We could have easily we could have lost this match, and uh, Karius is the reason we didn't. Not just him, obviously. I mean, Burak. But yeah. Karius is my man of the match. Yeah, I, I, I like that. I think, yeah, there are probably some more obvious uh, choices, but Karius certainly uh, played a very vital, pivotal role for us in, in the kind of game where, uh, you know, things could have gone very differently, as, as everyone alluded to a few times. Uh, yeah, that was vital. He was a vital part of that. Evron, what do you say? <laughs> oh. Well, uh, I was thinking about picking carries, so obviously ah, I'll pick someone different. Okay. I just want to comment that, like, although I don't think any of his saves were, like, super impressive, where, like, I was like, wow, how did he save that? I think there was a lot of those saves that Tolga would have just stood there and be like, damn, I could not have yes, saved that. Exactly. That was just was too gonna... well placed. That's I didn't want to be mean, but of. yeah, I was going to call out Tolga, but exactly, yeah, exactly. That's kind of... One of those games where it could be like four to three late, and they might grab that equalizer because, like, yeah, I, the penalty I was. See a, Toga the sitting there, like really standing in his place. <laughs> the penalty was great, but also there was uh, there were two where he really had to dive and reach, and he did very well. Yeah, there were a couple. Like there were like a, that long shot from Sedat that wasn't too difficult, I think. But there was there was one that I thought to myself, wow, he's keep he's, he's saving everything today. I, I, I just can't remember what it was, but uh, yeah, I just, same, same. I really had that it feeling was, today. It was like, like late, was... it was after uh, he'd had a couple saves that were kind of nice, and then there was like a uh, an additional one, which is actually the most impressive, but you know, you kind of get lost at that point because there had been a bunch. Yeah. Um, but so yeah, everyone, who? Totally. who? <laughs> yeah, who's your man? Who's your man oh, of that? I think it's got to be Burak Yilmaz just because how poor we started the game and then he basically, you know, our 
Yeah. Our first shot, maybe our first time we actually, like, you know, cross to the final third, cuts in and smacks one home from outside the box. Then, you know, that yeah. definitely that first changed the game in our class. favor. Uh, I mean, he did score twice, back. but yeah. yeah. The second goal obviously wasn't, like, Not as penalty. impressive. He just, but, you know, you still have to score the penalty. Still have to score, yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah. that penalty that Olsan missed against Gustepe and, and then we ended up losing the match. Was it this season or last season? I, I think it was I think it was this season that we we lost in like this, this season. season. I know it was this I know we <laughs> I lost this season in Gostepe. I, I just don't remember if that was uh I think we got a penalty in the 15th minute. Olsan stepped up, missed it, and then we ended up losing the match. I don't remember if that this season or last season. Uh, I don't remember if we lost last season in Gostepe too, but we definitely did this season. So I think it might have been this season. So scoring penalties uh especially at crucial score lines. I mean, uh, 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 when it's 3 0 already, scoring a penalty is not that important. But when it's 1 0 or when it's 0 0, scoring a penalty is important. Obviously, his first goal is far more impressive than the, than the penalty. But uh, he, he's he been putting the team on his back the entire second half of the season and he's dragging us across the finish line. Um, 11 goals in 12 ma 13 matches. Sorry. It's, it's, it's not, I mean. Benjamin Button, man. That's all I gotta say. Because yeah, he's I mean, getting more efficient. It's kind of crazy. I, I think I said something like uh, 10 goals in the entire second half of the season. That would be a success. But he's already at that, and, and there's still four games to go. And if he stays healthy, God willing, and I'm not, a, I'm not a believe, I'm, I'm not a fan. Not a believer, I'm not a, yeah. I'm not a fan, man of fate. But I'm gonna use that sentence, something I probably never said in my life before. But God, Ethan willing, he stays healthy and he keeps on scoring because if he does. Sky's we don't know limit, where we eh? can end. Yeah, the sky is the limit. And, it, you know, honestly, I think... I'm not going to speak about it. I'm not, I don't want to jinx anything. Yeah, stop. Stop. I'll but one thing I will say now. is that in the, in the <laughs> offseason, I think we have to have a, a debate with you versus one of the twins about Mario Gomez versus Barack Yilmaz. Because those guys are, like, standing heavily. <laughs> uh, and I think it'd be uh, a fun... It'd be an illuminating discussion. I think everyone anyway, knows... That I'm a huge Mario fan. I know, fan. and that's why it would be a great um, conversation. But, but depending on the, how the season ends. But that's I why, mean, yeah, we have to see. We have to see. But yeah, all right. I mean, I want to depending on how it ends, there shouldn't be a discussion. I, I, I don't think you can have a discussion if the season ends in a particular way because then there's just no, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, yeah. we'll talk about that when the time comes. But <laughs> um, I don't even really want to do a low light thing today because it's, it's yeah, Najib didn't play. So. Yeah, Najib didn't play. Who, who are we gonna? Um, I mean, okay, just a few notes. Ativa was a little bit uh, reticent, slow in the first, you know, the entire 15 team. minutes. Oh. Yeah, but really, you could kind of say the whole team was, and they all picked it up well later on. So I don't really want to sort of pick on who's anyone. Who's your Who's your highlight? You still have to. So yeah, I'm gonna pick as my highlight. I was gonna say Domingos Vida. The goal was big, although it was a clumsy one, not very... Uh, but he's just been so key on the back line for so long now. Um, Adem Lijajic also, always clutch, always uh, a contributor. Um, Gokhan Gonul also. You know, I, I guess I'm the, like, honorable mention guy. I'm just making all the notes of guys who sort of did pretty well in the end. Uh, but yeah, uh, between those three, I think you could probably just take your pick. But you guys got the, the two main ones for sure. Um, let me move on. Now, let's move on to these questions because there's one in particular that I really think is a, is a good bridge between analyzing today's match and uh, beginning to discuss this big derby match that's coming up. Just say two who actually has already come in with a question previously at Nesai Trien, N E S A I T R I E N, asks, uh, I'm gonna pose this to Khan first again. Uh, how do you comment about, he says, can't keeping ball, about, or, so, I'll, I'll, I'll sort of edit a little, about the fact that Bajitash can't keep the ball in the middle of the field and their low passing capacity, or I suppose he means their lack of efficiency, especially today, and lack of completed passes in general. He says, next week, or, so how will, will this affect the derby next week? You know, maybe this style of play you know is it the type of is it something that's negatively going to start carrying on and becoming a persistent problem i guess is what he's asking what do you think con firstly uh is uh, he well, correct to say that um the team can't keep the ball in the middle and they have low passing capacity 
based on well, today? Before before I answer his question, I do have to give you a mild correction on your pronunciation. I'm sorry. Je sais tout. Oh, I say everything. excuse me. It's not, yeah, well, you say je sais tout, and that means I say you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay. No, but... Um, well, I think we kind of discussed that last week already. Uh, I think I asked a question to everyone last week. Would you say that we're more a reactionary team this season? And uh, I think everyone confirmed what I was already thinking. We we are. Uh, that's pro- pro- yeah, partly because of our uh, less dominating play in midfield. I mean, if you go back to the 2015-16 season, in which I think we had an incredibly dominant midfield with Ozan, Sosa and Atiba, uh, a midfield with uh, at least Ozan close to 85% passing accuracy, uh, Atiba close to 93, and then Sosa was lower, but he took a lot more risks, so 78 or so. Um, but we we had the ball a lot. We had probably around 60% on average of, of, of ball position that season. We were a team that really had the ball, ticked it around a lot. I think we've kind of slowly been morphing more and more into um, – uh, a reactionary team a la Real Madrid the past couple of seasons. Uh, I think the first half of the season we didn't really have the tools for that because we didn't have Burak Yilmaz, uh, which has been key. Um, uh, it's, it's not necessarily a positive thing, obviously, as Besiktas uh, and also as Real Madrid. There's a reason why Real Madrid won the Champions League three times in a row but couldn't win the league. Um, when it comes to league football, when you're the favorite, you obviously want to be able to make the make the game and I think it's more difficult when you lean more on reactionary football now in this final stretch of four matches it may work out in our favor but we have to work towards next season we have to uh, implement a new player somehow we have to improve that midfield we have to be able to play different sorts of football right now I think this is the only thing we can really effectively do and do it relatively well Um, I think next week again this could be favorable for us uh, this football, which what we're playing, and like I said, I think in this last final four four match stretch, also away at Trabs on, on, in theory, playing this type of reactionary football could work out in our favor, um, but in the long run, we're going to want to change things up. I think we're going to need some transfers in midfield. Uh, I think we're all fans of Dorokan, but. We'll have to wait and see if he can fit into a midfield that plays dominant football. I think Atiba is slowly but surely. I mean, he's still he's still playing at a high level at this point, but we're going to have to replace him at some point. And I think the main reason we're not playing that type of football anymore is because we don't have uh, a midfield playmaker anymore. Uh, not, at least not a deep playing playmaker uh, like yeah, Ozan nice was. Like yeah, Ozan, wouldn't I, it? yeah, that's the thing. I think we're missing that factor, that type of player to play that type of football. And I think with Atiba and and, and Dorokhan, it's a lot more difficult to take that play that type of football. Hmm. Um, and so, do you see that? How do you how do you see this impacting the game against Galatasaray? No, I think against Galatasaray. Um, doesn't really matter what happens tomorrow the pressure is going to be on them more than it's going to be on us they're going to want to make the game um they're gonna have they're probably going to have most of the ball and we're probably going to play a little bit more reactionary anyway so i don't necessarily think it makes a big impact i don't think it's i don't think we have to go there and dominate possession um and i don't think i think if we do that I'm not saying we should lean back and try to counter. That's not what I'm saying. But um, I don't necessarily think that we need to win midfield. Well, we need to win midfield, obviously. And that was a big problem in the first match against Galatasaray. I think Fernando was really bullying uh, Atiba in that match. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, So it could prove difficult for us. But I think now we have uh, an axis or, or, or a final point, so to speak, with Burak up front. So I think... They are, they're going to have to be a lot more careful uh, with leaving gaps in the back um, and, and, and we're going to be a lot more dangerous hitting them on the counter uh, or maybe just, you know, hitting them from 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 possession anyway. But uh, I don't necessarily think it's going to have a negative impact on the match. I think it might actually work in our favor because we're, we've become quite efficient on counters. Um, but uh, it's an away match, so it's going to be tough regardless. Everyone, do you have anything to note on that in that regard? Um, 
Yeah, I, I agree with a lot of what Khan said. I think um as like we 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 like Doru Khan obviously, but um yeah, so uh, Doru Khan was uh you know wasn't he was good overall today, but I think on the ball he was a little more sloppy than usual. His pass success or pass completion rate was only sixty four percent today. Usually he's around you know seventy five to eighty five that range. Because uh, Tebow was still eighty nine percent, which is a little bit below maybe his you know his ninety yeah. percentages, but it was still you know it's still up there. So I think just in terms of possession, that didn't help. But as Khan said, we don't really have that playmaker anymore. Because Dodo Khan's more of a more of a box, box to box. box yeah. Yeah, he's not really a deep mm-hmm. lying regista kind of like my my man Ozan <laughs> is. But uh, <laughs> it's um it's it's really just a multitude of things. Also, like we don't have Bobble anymore, which I understand. You know, he had to go, but he was more efficient, I think, than our all of our other wingers. At just that link up play and being patient. As much as I love Quarez, when he doesn't usually show that, and I don't think anyone will say that Lens really resembles Bobble in his no. link up play. I mean, I, I know Khan loves him, but I think we can all agree that just a player like Bobble is more efficient in that, you know, that tiki taka kind of play. And Guven certainly isn't. I, I that think Lens works, contributes more working, work rate rise, but I mean, in terms of efficiency, you can't. I mean, Bobble's clearly better. Yeah, I mean, I, f- I feel like you say we had to get rid of him, and I feel like things had gotten fairly toxic, I guess, but um, I, I feel like a lot of that logic at that point was like things were collapsing and we were kind of offloading guys. And in retrospect, we may have been, like, we've really lacked. A winger this entire second half of the season so it's been something of a problem yeah. area although now with quaresma back that'll be less of an issue hopefully so but anyway yeah but again i mean i don't know if that fits the the reactionary football we're playing though i think quaresma is more doesn't really fit anymore because he i think he's better when you put when you're playing with an always type in midfield i think when you're playing the football we're playing and and we've seen like one of those where we got a really good assist against Gustepe. That was like one time, bang, bang, thank you, ma'am. Mm-hmm. You know, but we don't see that from Quaresma. Usually he temporizes on the wing and he tries to cross it. In, uh, he tries early crosses, but he, that one time, that's like one of the first. That's one of the very few assists I can remember from Quaresma where he he gets to the back line quickly and swings it in. Making it more difficult for the defenders. I, that's not this type of. That's not the type of assist he usually gives, and I think that's the type of mm-hmm. winger we need um, if you're going to have a crossing yeah, winger. I mean, we'll have to talk a lot in the off season about our needs and all that kind of stuff. Um, everyone, I'm going to put the next question on you, sir. Um, so Uzjan uh-huh. Oer, our, our old friend, the, one of the one of the twins. This is a sort of a tongue-in-cheek question, I assume. Will the king execute his ex-subject's title hopes? Evron, what do you think? Oh, <laughs> um, I mean, hopefully, yeah, the answer we're all we're all counting Since on. Since you're the color commentator, uh, tell us what the hell he's talking about. What does he mean <laughs> <laughs> for those who may not know? Um, yeah, so king, people like to call Burak Kral, you know, king in Turkish. Um, but uh, so his ex subjects being his former team Galatasaray. So I yeah. think that was before he went to China. He played for them, obviously. So uh, we're we're hoping he can go back and uh, and uh, you know show him show so him. So luckily he survived the day today and uh, didn't get that yellow card that was like hovering over him. And yeah. Chanel Ganesh was like hesitant Especially to take him out the guy even when he, we didn't need him out there. So that was like a nervy thing. Uh, but yeah, he did survive the day. Khan, what do you think? Do you think you think Burak Yilmaz puts down his old team? I choose not to comment. <laughs> you, you don't want to. No jinx. I, jinx I, free. I, I re- 2003. I, I don't. I, I don't want to be negative. It's an away derby. I think we're still in 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 a, in a we're you know we're still underdogs right yeah. now. Um, yeah, I think so. I don't know. Let's not forget, Galatasaray splurged in the off season, right? Or in the, the winter break. Galatasaray are not impressing me all that much, but neither are we, if I'm honest. I mean, if you look how much uh, trouble Ankrogaju gave us today, I really don't know, it's man. It's a derby, you know? Um, Anything can happen. Yeah, I'm too, I'm too close. I'm too close to this to give a, 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 a really a proper opinion on this. I think when we look at form graphics, I think we're in a better form. I think we're scoring more. We're more efficient. Um, uh, I think 
uh, on all those fronts, I think we're doing better right now. But it's God's try. It's it's a home game for them. It's Fatih Terim who's gonna be. You know, this is for them. Every match is a final now. Uh, we're not Fenerbahce who somehow always seem to manage to. I don't know. Make make their composure disappear. They don't ha- seem to have that issue against us. Uh, I don't know. It's gonna be a nervous game, I think, for both teams. One of them is gonna. One of us is going to give up on the title. One team. One team is. One, one of the two teams' is title dreams are okay, gonna be shattered that. next week. I mean, I, you, barring a draw, barring a draw, a, a draw would be interesting. Even with a draw, I think. It's probably well. No, it draw. Yeah, a draw actually no, because Bashar lost this weekend, and Galatasaray still had that match in hand. So if they win tomorrow, tomorrow's important for them too. They have to win tomorrow. If they win tomorrow, a draw wouldn't even be a massive disaster for them because then they can still finish the job at home against Bashar But then they have to assume right. they can beat yeah, Bashar Shir. Uh, and I, I think banking on that is is difficult. That's gambling. Uh, I think pressure is high on them. Uh, pressure is high on us, obviously, for, because for us, I mean, I think if we win there, we probably guarantee second place. Although we still have a very difficult away game against Trabzonspor, but most likely we probably guarantee ourselves second place if we beat them. Uh, if we draw, we still have a chance at the title still, I think, but it's going to be tough. It all depends a little bit on what Bashakshir does. Look, if Bashakshir next week draw points again, then we can draw, obviously. Um, yeah. Uh, but it's 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 so difficult. It's so difficult to say. I really don't want to say. Uh, obviously, right now, Barak is, is is the most informed striker in the league. Maybe even the most informed player. Um, he's scoring for fun at the moment. Uh, if look, if we if 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 one player is gonna do it, it's probably him, right? It's probably it's probably him or <laughs> Yaj. Damn it, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah, but I, I, I really don't. I, I wouldn't bet on it. I wouldn't. I would not put my money on this match either way. Yeah, it's, it's just no. Always different. when it comes to gambling, stay away from derbies, especially in Turkey, man. Like, yeah. <laughs> just stay away from the Turkish league in general. Yeah, right. But there could be four red cards in the first like ten minutes. You have no way of knowing. Anyway, um, Dara, Dara Hensi asked a question too. Oh, was that in the group? Oh, you, you. I didn't yeah, see that. I didn't see the uh, the WhatsApp. What, yeah. what did he ask? He. he he asked, so Dara Hansi asked whether um, Quaresma would start next week. Will Shannon Gunnar start Quaresma next week? Ooh, Evran, yeah. your turn. You gotta answer that one. <laughs> I mean, I think, uh, I assume he'll come off the bench for Lens around the 50 to 60th minute. That's just my, that's what I'm feeling. Seems a little early for someone with that much of a work rate. Depends on the score, right? But yeah, it depends how it's going. If things are going well, things are going bad, I think he's gonna come on regardless. Unless we really just park the bus and sub yeah. on I mean, Nejip and Ozan and whoever else wants to sub on, but <laughs> I, th- I think you have to throw him in if you're if you're if you're behind. For sure. I mean, right now it seems like or tied. Kagawa and yeah. Quaresma are the kind of go-to guys that Shinoganesh kind of wants out there a little when he can put them out there to to keep them happy a little. I'm assuming Kagawa might start. I I was gonna say I, I I think Kagawa might start and we're not gonna see Guven Yalchin on the wing. Um, yeah, I was gonna say let's morph that question a little bit. Should he start or not? Or should I? I think Karajma is is st- I I don't believe people. I'm not a believer of he has no more value. I think he's definitely dull. But we discussed it last week. Super sub. I think he yeah. could be that thing we have behind. You know, we still have left. I mean, if if we're one nil down, uh, seventy eight minutes. Then you throw him in just to try and throw those balls in the box and just pray to God. But and there I am again with that God. Uh, there you but, go again, you, man. You're, you're you know, getting just religious pray to, this year. Just, just, just pray to whoever, whatever the you God. know, the, the Grand Almighty, football God, Grandmaster Yoda. I don't know. <laughs> um, Yoda. But I mean, yeah, that's that's the type. I, I think starting him uh, would be a mistake because I think it 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 hampers our reactionary type of football a little bit. Uh, I think he's the type of player you tr- you you 
you throw in when the, either the opposition is tired or you to keep to hold on to the ball perhaps to frustrate the opponents a little bit or, or if you're a goal down yeah. uh, or, or or even if it's draw you can throw him in if it's a draw i'd probably wait a little longer with throwing him in if you're a goal down uh, throw him in a little bit earlier um, but i think he should start on the bench uh, and not because I don't want him to start, just because I think he's more valuable at this point in this type of a match when he starts on the bench coming off in the second half as a sub. But I think he should come off the bench regardless. Unless, of course, you're maybe if you're leading 1 0 and you want to just, I don't know, then maybe you keep him, then you maybe you keep him on the bench until like the 85th minute or something. But I don't know. I mean, I think it's likely <laughs> he appears, but unlikely he starts. That's that's probably where we can all land on as far as agreement. Yeah. Um, Plus, he just returned from injury as well. Yeah, so. exactly. No, and he might not be ready for for a full. You, you need know, that kind of. You six. need the motor that Lens provides against a team like Lens today, maybe. And if things don't work out, you take him out of the half, whatever it is. But yeah. Um, last question, very tongue in cheek. Jamawaki at J A M A W A K I asks, Will Kevin Durant go to the Knicks? <laughs> Um, yes. <laughs> my all I can say is that he's going to uh, definitely come to the Knicks. <laughs> he, he must. He's going to resuscitate his reputation for having gone to Golden State uh, by coming to a historic franchise like the Knicks and turning it around. And the Knicks are going to be winning titles, baby. Yeah, my man. I see you over there, Jamawaki. Uh, but that's a, that's. We don't need to talk about the Knicks here. Um, but yeah, thank you guys for the questions. Um, even the jokey ones, we like the engagement, whatever the engagement may be, uh, we'll take the time to answer your questions, even if they're jokes. Uh, yeah, any parting thoughts, guys? Any, you know, you have a closing thought, closing commentary. Of course, everyone come back next week. You know what, what's happening. We have a big derby in the Turk Telecom Arena. And we will be here in some fashion, whether it's three of us or two of us or whatever it may be. Um, Six of us. <laughs> yeah, who knows, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, multiply. Uh, but yeah, so uh, parting thoughts, guys, about today's match, about next week's match, uh, a- anything at all about Besiktas. What do you guys have to say? Khan, you first. Oh. Um, well, four, <laughs> four more matches, four more Champions League finals, yeah. almost. Every match um, is that big, yeah. I think at this last week I said if we win everything, we still don't have it in our own hands, and it's still like that, but I think if we win everything, we're champions. But <laughs> let's do that first. Uh, I, 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 you know what? If we can go into the Trabzon match, still in a good position for the title I think that'll be great um, next week is gonna but I think next week is gonna make or break it if we lose next week I think that will probably have a certain effect on the team the realization will creep in it's over and then that might result in a little bit of a re- wavering results but we've, we're unbeaten in 2019 I think we should not lose I think we can at least get a point there and uh, we're cap- we're definitely capable of winning, but yeah, lots of stuff is gonna have to go right for us, um, and we just have to hope that the referees don't play a role. Um, but they haven't really in recent derbies, so I don't think it's gonna be much of a. F- I hope it's not gonna be much of a factor. Let's just hope it's gonna be a proper referee appointed to the match. It's gonna allow the game to flow. It's not gonna blow his whistle for every little thing. Um, no Ali Palabiuk, please. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, no yeah. announcement there yet. And right? you, you know what? Know be. You know what? If Galtrai beat us, then they deserve to win it. I because predict. I, think... I just want to predict that it's going to be Junet Jack here. He's the headliner. You know, I think you, when you, you would have to derby. assume. You would have to assume. But... No, but I. I mean, I think we are the team to beat right now. We are the most yeah. informed team in the league. If Galtrai beats us. And it's not like a screw job or anything. If it's like, even if it's like a, a, a messy one nil, but it's like not. You know, it's not like a, a faulty penalty or whatever, or something completely ridiculous. Then, to me, they can win it. Then they the, then they deserve the title. If they beat us, they deserve it. If they don't beat us, if sorry, the but then, uh, 
then it's then we're no angry. but i mean if, if they fail to beat us like they failed to beat fenerarchy two weeks ago then i think uh, sorry but uh you don't deserve the title um and then i just hope that they do us a favor and beat bashakshi here and uh, that we uh, lift the title at the end of the row but you know what the most important thing to take away i think is that six matches ago let's say two months ago nobody believed that we would be in this position in the last four matches of the season we came from 13 points down to to three now i know i've said it before but it's it's half a miracle already so yeah. why not just complete why the not miracle just com- let's complete do it the miracle. tie yeah. up the loose ends Evran, yeah. what about you take us out with um, first thoughts well i think right now we're all like you know we're all feeling good because we just won a lot of games. Uh, I think, like, right now, you're, we're, like, emotionally confident going to the game. You know, we won, we won, we won. We're ready for this big game. But I think just, uh, I think deep down inside, I, I feel like we've been getting really lucky. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think for a lot of, like, last year, I was always saying, you know, we're losing. We're not, we're dropping points. But, you know, we're actually, we're creating more chance the other team. We have the possession. The ball's just not falling. Mm-hmm. I think now we have, the luck has started to change a little bit. And we have players that are not. We have a striker. Our, our levels. Yeah, we have a striker and we, we have a goal scoring, scoring striker. So before yep. we were we were creating chances, but we were dropping points and everyone was, you know, was frustrated. Now we're creating less chances, but we just have more competent players in there. So I'm hoping I'm hoping this momentum just keeps going. But I it, I know it can't go forever, but four games is not forever. So no. hopefully, you know, hopefully this this momentum just keeps it's, Comic. Six. What is it? Six more weeks. <laughs> if they can keep this up, six more weeks. And and you know what? I said. It, I know. I said it in the group. This will be the biggest miracle as that I have lived as a Bishkek fan. Yeah. If we end up winning the title, that's going to be the biggest. That's going to be the biggest comeback of all time. It's bigger than the three three against Benfica in the Champions League. I mean, because that's one match. Right. This this Sustained. would be historic. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, and you know we need this. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah, we need. Oh my god! We could yeah. keep Lawrence need... Carriers and we need, to... <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> we need top two foot. We need two up two. We need to try and get that the ticket to the Champions League. We need to not get banned from Europe. Yeah, uh, of course. Because let's, <laughs> let's imagine we win the league and then we get and banned. Then we get banned. <laughs> uh, imagine. God damn it! All right, uh, all right. Um, <laughs> okay. I'm gonna I, I I I'm gonna take us out today, and I'm gonna leave us with that parting metaphor that I did last week, because it's really beca- it's com- becoming prophetic. That that horse that starts out in the middle of the pack, and well while, while everyone's up ahead, and just starts racing up front, and then starts slowly passing everyone and rearing its head into contention. We're at the final stretch of the race now, and we're literally like in that neck and neck scenario. And Besiktas, in a weird way, because of the momentum and the kind of quality that i mean we have gotten lucky but we've gotten lucky in a way that sort of looks i mean we're winning handily in these matches even sometimes so uh yeah. in a way i feel like we have the momentum we we are clearly still the outsiders we're still uh-huh. behind the pack but we're really the, the the pace at which we're approaching the pack is what's kind of exciting yeah that's it. that's the thing yeah we're behind but we're running faster than the two leaders at the at the moment. That can ha- that can of course be stopped next week. But I think there's one very important quote that we need to remember going into these last four weeks, and which is very important for for the players too. You know what that quote is? <laughs> it was great. It was said by a very small but great man. Do what or do not. There is no try. <laughs> Yoda. <laughs> Do or do not. There is no try. Um, all right. I'm going to take us out. Follow us on Twitter at Eagles underscore podcast. Follow the mothership, Besiktas International, at Besiktas underscore INT. Follow Khan, the leader of that ship, at Razarian, R A double Z E R I A N. Follow me at Sir underscore rights underscore a lot. Follow Evron, the young man at fan of bjk and stay tuned we will be back next week uh next sunday may 5th best will be playing that today on the road 
noon, 12 p.m. here in New York City, Eastern Standard Time for Khan. That's 6 p.m. or 18 uh, hour. Uh, so that's uh, 7 p.m. in Istanbul. Stay tuned, guys. Of course, it's going to be exciting. Uh, if we win, we can all re revile in, in the joy of it together. If we lose, the haters can come prey on us. You know, whatever it is, stay tuned. Um, Khan, you need to step me up here. We did this awkwardly. <laughs> <laughs> How do I close out the episode? <laughs> How do you Please like, subscribe, and rate. Yeah, subscribe us. No, no, no. But uh, actually, there's one more thing I have to say before we do this. Danny Pierce came in with a quote unquote question. I did ask for them. He says, yes, I have a question for you, mate. Winky, winky thing. Uh, before the winter break, everyone wanted Chanel Ganesh sacked and our season was over. I said then we would still be in the race to be champions this year, as I always believe in Vegetash. Everyone said I was mad. You just have to have faith. He wrote to the number instead of T-O. I just want to make a note of that. Um, <laughs> Danny Pierce, <laughs> I will say to you, sir, go Besiktas! And, uh... Yes. Yeah. I what will does also Channel have say, to do with this I man? He's getting bailed out by Dwek Yilmaz. I asked you for a question, and there was not a single question in that tweet. But I still gave you a shout out, Danny. We love you, man. Uh, <laughs> you did hey, always believe. No we, one can take that uh, from you. But it may have been a whether we win, <laughs> whether we win or, 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 or don't win the league this season, Channel Gunish has to go. It's this has been done for so long, it doesn't matter. If we win the title, this is not Channel Gunesh's title. That's 95% Brock Dillmas' title if we win it. Yeah. 95%. But and so you know what? You know what, people? Uh, the people who 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 were 100,000% against him coming, they, they maybe have to reconsider, but I'm not reconsidering my opinion on Channel Gunesh. I'm still adamant he should have left months ago i'm still adamant that it's the best thing for the club that he leaves at the end of the season um, next season we're gonna have a new coach probably an old familiar face according to uh many sources uh, and i think that next season if this team sticks together uh and we don't have like a massive financial hemorrhage or something i think we're gonna do well next season well and on that note go back to class everyone see you next week <laughs> wow, that was a good effort. Really? What? I felt like we've been going for two hours. What could he restart? Yeah, I know. It's good. It's all right. Well, guys. Besiktas International hopes you enjoyed this program.